One most difficult thing in bonsai is about balance. One key word is balance. So balance means a lot. The seven national, and then uh, Bill asked me to do the critique like last year, like last time that we did. And so, so I'm gonna go around, gonna talk to the certain trees, talk about us. Uh, tree. And then if you have any specific tree that you you like me to talk about, I will pick probably three for now, maybe up to five at the end. Okay, so just go around, talk about a certain specific one, and then uh, how we do the setup, how the tree, when you go back home, if you be in charge doing the exhibit for your own club, something, some basic rule that you need need to keep in mind what, what, how you do the display. Okay, so we start out. How do you have the flow of the whole, whole, whole display, whole table? When you start with one table, there, there are two things that you need to, to consider first. First is the corner, corner tree. The flow of the corner tree flow inward. So the good, good PC, good, Good style that you use for the for the corner is slant style, cascade, semi-cascade. So that will be the corner tree. And then next is the one in the center. Try to find the main tree to anchor the center. And then from that on, the next next thing is try to keep different species, different type of tree between. Don't put two two kind of tree in in the same space. Sometimes we can't avoid that, so we use what we can. But try to have, okay, have pine. The next one can be deciduous, can be broadleaf. And the next one can be another conifers, can be junipers, can be something else. Okay, so this is a good, good corner tree. So when you display, you display big tree, big tree, big tree fill up. The normal space that we display the tree is six foot, six foot table. So when you have six foot table, you try to fill that space for one display. So if you have big tree, what you're gonna have is, uh, let's see the one in the back here. So usually main tree and the action plan. If you have more room, you can put a scroll in there. Okay, for the three point, this is called three point display. So the tree medium size. So the different category. So start out from the smallest one is mummy. Mummy means bean. Bean size tree up to two inches. The height from the base to the top is up to two inches. The next one is Chohin, between two to eight. That's Chohin. And the next group, uh, they used to, to, to combine the group together called Shuhin, from eight inch to 18. That's Chuhin. So the Chuhin group, uh, sometimes you may, may find that they call another Kifu. kifu. Kifu between 8 and 12. But for the Kifu and Shohin, this, uh, Shohin display, you do three points. So three points is a combination of two tree, accent plan, one tree, accent plan, scroll, figurines. Direction of the tree lean towards each other, so the flow towards each other. And then put the accent plan in the center. This is a common one. From time to time you come up you have the two trees that lean the same direction. Then you have a little problem. So you want it to go in, you want to confine, to, you want to, to have this play in your space. So in that case, we put the main tree kind of in the center, off a little bit, and then the second tree and an action plan on the other side. So that's acceptable on, on the tree point. If you have two trees, two main the main one, second tree, flow the same direction, that's how you do it. Okay, so the flow is the tree is good, and then the, the, the way the tree lean towards each other, an action plan in off center. So action plan that you put can be, if it's a little bit larger, go toward the main tree. If it's smaller, go toward the smaller tree. But we like to put small display, put small action plan. You want the variation in height. High mountain tree put in taller stand. Taller stand, not tall pot. Taller stand. 
and then the second tree a little bit lower. But sometimes you can be vice versa. You don't want it the same height. You want one taller, one, one lower, and the action plan is, is uh, slightly more forward. So you get the depth between the display and the display also. You don't want everything lined up. You want one in the back, slightly forward, and action plan is in the front. Okay. Uh, so what you do in bonsai is uh, when you start working on the tree, most, most of us start with juniper. So we start the tree, we put first branch, second branch, third branch. And then later on we go, people say, oh, you know the rules and then you bend, bend the rules away from what, what you do. That's two things that you can. So Mother Nature, the way the tree grow, follow that. Don't go away from that. So basic, basic structure of the tree, most, most of the tree that we work with is triangular silhouette. The older one, some species is more round than the other. Some species is more uh, apical dominant, we try to keep the apex a little bit smaller. And the tree that grow in group together, apex we also make a little bit smaller, more pointy apex. The tree that grow by itself, the tree that grow in the high mountain. High mountain tree doesn't have to, feed, to fight for light. So the tree tend to, the top tend to spread out. To, they don't have to, po to point out. To, to fight for the other. So you find the tree on the high mountain, on the top, they're more round than the other. And then you work with the deciduous tree. The deciduous tree has a different way that they present and also broadleaf. So certain tree has no shape in nature. They have no shape in nature. So you come up with a shape to design to make it look nice. So first you still have some kind of design of the tree that's go like a bush. And then the design that you put in is kind of like pine. Pine is the king of bonsai. So we usually, the tree had to have no shape. We use the pine style, but we adapt them what you want to show, what you want to, to, to make it look. So this, this is a fruit tree. There's a little few, a few fruit in the back there. Okay, there are a few fruit in the back. You want to show the fruit. You want to show the flower example of azalea. we talk about azalea later. So azalea pad, should be a little bit lower to show the flower. Conifers stay the same, we, it, it looks the same all year round, so you don't have to have it lower pair, it should be more round on conifers. So on this one, when you, when you grow them, uh, one most difficult thing in bonsai is about balance. One key word is balance. So balance means a lot. It means how the flow of the tree, balance between the right side and the left side, the top and the bottom. So the top branch and the bottom branch. So this is one we do. We do first thing we fight against nature. Second, we want to make the tree look natural. The tree want to grow big. The tree want to spread out. We want to confine them. We want to make them small. How to make them small? There's a few different things that that we do. And I, I there's a few terms that I talk to my students. What we do? So how you cut them? When you cut them? what you, your goal is. The goal is, when you do the tree well, it will respond to you, it will grow within one year. It will grow to a certain amount when you prune it correctly. Within one year, it will regenerate itself. It's gonna grow back. You do it correctly, it's gonna look like you done it the year before, but you're gonna have more growth on it. And then you thin it. Certain species you thin a little bit more, certain species you keep it fuller. So on the broad leaf, people are trying to push it to get small leaves. You can do that on broad leaf, but on some that like fruiting flowering tree, you want to show the fruit. The leaf that, that produce food for the tree is the big leaves that produce the food and they produce the fruit for the tree. So the mature leaf, you can shrink them by promoting more branches on the tree. When the tree gets more branches, the leaf will shrink by itself. When you have a few branches, the branches tend to grow a little bit stronger. So when you, when you do that, then you manage them. So fruiting flowering tree, we don't keep small leaves. The small leaf at the base we take off, we keep normal size leaf, and then let the normal size leaf grow, and then cut it back. The leaf's still big, you can cut the leaf in half. Defoliating them will 
we will reduce the chance for them to, to set the flower. Okay. Next, when you start the tree, is the trunk. The trunk is the soul. Trunk is the soul of the tree. What you do is you framing the trunk when you start bonsai. So how far the structure going out? You want to see the base. So this one, the branch hiding the base. You can't see the low part of the trunk. Low part of the trunk has a has a dead wood on it, an old dead wood. You want to show that. So I think this one move move it a little bit to show the trunk and move the branch out. And this one too far forward. And you see it swing back. So certain certain tree you can do that. Certain tree you shouldn't. This you do as broad leaf, you shouldn't do that. Shouldn't do Conifer, bring the branch around to oh, the other side. Like yeah, yeah. You can grow them, easy to grow. Just cut them, the new one come out, so the right place. Your, you would chop that front I back. will cut that front branch off and grow a new one. So use the back branch to come forward. And you also have the side branch, you change this, this becomes side branch, you can bring it forward a little bit more. And then for the height, the trunk has taper. You want the tree, you have good tree, good tree has taper. The trunk come slanting to a, to a together, so that you get taper. So you draw two lines where it meets, that's the height of the tree. As simple as that. <laughs> so when you have taper, so that's how you determine the height. So this tree, the taper come up, the height should be here. And then you go make the tree a little bit more compact. Where are you starting the Yeah, this going so up. Just the base of the trunk. Yeah, just about there. So it's the angle that the, the trunk move, move to it together. Okay, so, so with parallel, it's only one that we use that has no taper, but still can, can consider. Good tree is a uh, broom style. So Kowa um, that has no taper and the branches all come out. That's a broom style. It's also grown naturally. There's tree that's grown naturally that way. Okay. So you would make, because of the taper, you would make I will cut it way back. Shorter? Yeah, so you can oh. see two things happen now. The lower branch, the leaf gets smaller, get thinner. The top get big and wide. So you have to get the balance back. So cut it back, let the bottom branch grow more, let it grow a little bit longer also. As simple as that, okay? But when you have to point the tree just a little bit above, you can do, fill up the space by putting a scroll. Putting a scroll, that will make the tree, the shape look, look better. So box was the tree that has no shape. The tree that has no shape, they grow like a bush. Two things you can do, you can thin them out. Keep it profile kind of like oak, oak tree. Or start it some kind of like a pine style. So this one's kind of like a pine style. The two trunks come out, but everything blend together as a one tree. So when you have two trunks, try to keep separation. Little separation to make it look nicer. I think, yeah, so bring, bring this one down a little bit and then keep the broad a little bit wider. Keep the profile a little bit longer. And then you can see the lower branch come up from the main, main one. The tree that has slant, twin trunk, I prefer to have long branch on this side. But it takes a long time to redevelop that. Okay. Okay, you might talking about the thing in the back there? So Scott Pine. So the tree does, does uh, refine, look pretty, but still a little bit thin for the style. And also when you look, you look at, you look at the tree, the branches come out. The first branch come out kind of toward the back a little bit. Yep. So this I believe is dwarf. One, one thing about dwarf variety, they grow like a bush, so you don't have a lot of interior branches. You have to regrow them. Take a long time to do that. And the, the branch a little bit heavy to bend, difficult to bend, it tend to be a little yeah. bit more brittle. So over time you can still bring it down. And the two branches lost on the bottom are already is gone. So what, what you have there, when you start them, just pull. I would pull the branch back down a little bit more. So it would get the structure done a little differently. Put the branch back down some more and create layers create layers. Okay. A certain specific maples. So dwarf variety display or tree 
you train them different from the regular Japanese maple. So you read in the book, the Japanese maple come out, the new, new, new leaf unfold, the shoot start, you can, you can use the tweezer to open it up, pluck the center out, keep two leaves. So that's the way you refine the tree, not on dwarf. So you, you have Kiyohime, Kotohime, Shishikishira. So those are the three that commonly used uh, for bonsai. When you train them, you, you don't do that. You let them grow out and cut them. Hmm. Cut them. Let them go out a little bit longer and cut them. This one, I think this one has been early years. It's trained, Bill trained it for a long time. One thing about dwarf also, the branch is different. The texture of the branch is different from regular. Regular, you can see the branch come out and you get refined branch, a lot of side branches. On this, you don't get a lot of side branch. The branch tends to be a little bit heavier. The branch is a little heavier. It goes slightly more upward than the other species. So this species is specific. But in general, when you, you have Japanese maple, what you want? You want good, good nabari. You have collected trees, collected uh, spruce, pine, juniper. You don't have that. Because the tree grow with the dead wood, don't use that as your judgment of a good tree, a bad tree. So that's a different category altogether. But maple, you want the tree with good root. You want the tree with good, good, good trunk, no big open wound. The open wound on Japanese maple could, could, this could be the tree has disease. And, and the common, common disease that happens is verticillium wilt. It is virus and there's no cure for it. So the tree that has dead branch on it, sometimes it's caught from the root, from the soil. Verticillium wilt is soil born. Go into the trunk, go into the root and it start killing branches on the tree. And then you, you may, you may have, have the tree that have some branches die off, you cut it off, and then it happened again a few years later, it starts slowly dying. So, so that eventually, usually, it will kill the tree. So you don't want to see a lot of open wood. That's also become a bad part on Japanese maple. People see the open wood and try to carve it and make it look like conifer is a bad thing. Different thing. So you see, you have the tree that has the wound, has the open, has the big cut, try to seal it. Seal it, make sure that the cut close. Cut close, make sure that the, 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 the big wound that you make, you have to make, you make, when you grow them, you get from the nursery, you grow them from cutting from air layer. Sometimes we have to make big cut. Make sure that you seal it, get it covered up. And when the tree gets older, when the tree is young, it's green, the trunk is green. Certain species turn gray a little bit faster. But one thing that you cannot, cannot uh, rush is to get the tree old. You see the line on the trunk? That's natural line. That's take, only take time to get that. That's make the tree. That is the sign of older tree. You can, 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 can make it. Just have to wait. Yeah, ha just have to wait. So the tree, when, when the tree has no leaves, you're going to see that the branch get a little bit more cluster on the end. They don't have fine branch like the other species. This is species specific. Sometimes you see them, there's a few tree in Japan too, in Kokofu. Shishikishira get Kokofu price, and people look at it. How come this has no fine branch? No, this has no fine branch. That's the species, that's how they grow. So it's a dwarf variety. Okay. How old is that plant? How old is that? You have to check with Bill. I think it's about 30. 30 years from LA. He, been, he, he grow that. I think this tree is in his book. Yeah, it's in his book. Yeah. So that's the best way to propagate once uh, maple is a layer. A layer you get radio roots all the way around and you grow them. And then you need to arrange them when you repot. And then every year in fall, in spring, clean the root and get rid of the root that's cross. You want the root that's going out only. There's another guy, his name is Ebihara. You can check uh, Jonah's website. 
and check the blog. His name is Ebihara, E-B-I-H-A-R-A. -E Look for his article. He's the one who, two things he promote uh, that he did to the trees. He grow the tree from cuttings. And then he arranged the root when the tree is younger. He make from cutting, he grow them. About five years, he start rearranging the root, screw the trunk on the board, and use the nail to redirect the root and put curb on the, on, on the root. And also put the chopstick on top, keep the up and down also. But later on, the up and down disappear because when they fuse together, they start to blend in. So his old tree doesn't show that. But he has good, really good nabari. And then he creates good trunk. He bend them when they're young, grow them, they grow them bigger. And he add on the branches anywhere he wanted to. So he, he tread the little ceiling on the branch. A year later, he cut the top, the ceiling, the roots feeding the branch, cut the branch off and drill the hole on the trunk and he stick this thing in there. Within one year, it refills and become the branch on the tree. He can stick it wherever he wants. So that's one technique that a lot of people copy and then they write article about it. You might find some article in Bonsai Focus, but original guy who, that, who started that is Ebihara. Okay. So we've been working on it and develop it over time. Let it grow out, cut back, let it grow out, cut back. And we squeeze the tree in to the trunk a little bit more. Yeah, a little bit. Two, three years ago, the bending of the truck, or was it longer? Uh, in different stages. I thought I saw a Facebook post yeah. yeah. bending it. So yeah. it yeah. Yes. Originally, I collected it in 2007. And then, I think it's probably three years later, I might have, there could be a saw cut where I fused it. So I pulled in that branch because it was descending all the way down. So it was really only this. Oh, you pulled it up. Yeah, so part of that was coming all the way down. I pulled it up with a cut. Of the cut, they fuse very easy, mm -hmm. but they're very sappy. <clears throat> you can just cut, make a wedge, pull it in, it fuse. Um, yeah, and then. And then we've done a number of times pulling it in mm -hmm. uh, with wire. And yeah, guy wire. Guy wire, pull it in. To pull it closer, that whole top and the apex floating closer to the trunk. So you see, Jonas has a two. Little jack. Little clamp. We call Jackie. <laughs> That's Jackie. The Jack, Japanese called Jackie and they make that. That clamp we use to, to squeeze the branch in together, to get it tighter with Jack and then we guy wire. We slowly do that. And then the other way to get, he has another tree that's not here, we, we do a heavy bending. The, the trunk that big, we coil it out. Yeah. Coil it and put the aluminum wire in the wrap here and bend it. And good time to bend is when during the growing, growing time. A lot of time, conifer we do bend them in winter. We did this in June. We did this in June. Every one we do successful. Yep. We, we never lose them. Yeah. These and then one thing. These are a little different because they're deciduous, so this drops all the large drop all the needles. Yeah. So <laughs> one thing is though. one thing is you need to get the tree strong. So when we when we before we bend this, we have. The growth that year come out about over a foot long before we bend it. So that's make sure that the tree growing strong. When you bend it, it will repair itself. So when you work on the tree, anything that you do, you do heavy work on. After you do it, make sure that the tree is strong. It's in good soil, it's been well fed. Let the tree repair itself. You need to feed them, continue feeding them. So a certain thing we do at different time and we We've been successful doing that. Everything's growing well. Okay. So and then after that, so you you start the tree. The different stage. You work on the tree. You collect the tree first. After you collect the tree, you let the tree grow. Make sure the tree grow. Use good growing medium. And in the beginning, you can use pumice. And you can use some other medium. But I I don't use organic material in the soil. Yeah. Make sure the tree growing well, the shoots coming out, the tree growing strong, and then then feed it, make make them healthy, and then you start. After you start, same thing, let it grow out again. It will repair, sell the bend that you make. You let the tree grow, 
the bend that you make, it will start to set faster than when you keep clipping the tree. And then after that, you start styling, let the, let the tree grow, cut back, let the tree grow, cut back, learn how to do that. So every time you let them grow and cut back, when you cut back, you leave a little section of the new growth. That will create taper. So when you collect no organic material? I did <coughs> I, you know, I collected it out of bog. Yeah. We try to leave some of the natural okay. substrate. You leave that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They comb cool. out what you can a little bit so it's not clunky. You don't want it to sit in rock and that. Right? Okay. So you don't, you don't wash out. I don't wash all, all that. Okay. I tease mm -hmm. out stuff I sort of yeah. carefully. Okay. Some things will just fall off. Yeah. In the bog, I just take fresh new sphagnum moss and then clump it around and just bag it to get it out. Okay. to get it home. Then it went into all like either a pumice and partly uh, some, maybe some akadama, something else in a big box. I didn't disturb anything for like three years. Yeah, wooden box is the best, <laughs> yeah, best container to develop the tree. Uh, wooden box, when the, the sun hit the box, it doesn't get too hot. No. In the cold also, it doesn't freeze, the, the, it, it insulates the root ball. Yeah, wooden box is the best best uh, sort of container box. to use. I didn't disturb all that. So you left the soil that you brought it home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you don't, don't want to take off too much because uh, fine roots. Sometimes there's uh, with those they grow new roots into the, the layer in the bag. Yeah, you, you want start to mess around with it. New fine roots that are hanging off are going to come off with the stuff that's in there. You can destroy any of the roots. Yeah, keep the root ball first. <clears throat> Put it in the box, but the soil around it use pumice. Yeah. And then then once the tree grow, then you take it out. You start clear the. Mountain soil, original soil, over time. Yeah. yeah. There's a little bit of natural stuff yeah. with also in the soil that sometimes is nice to just keep. Mm -hmm. But if you disturb it, there are fine roots that you'll half away if you start to try to or if you wash it all off. So next thing I want to talk uh, about is when you do display, ask some time that you choose. Ask some time that you choose based on first location, where the tree come from, the tree come from the bog. Those come from the same area that the tree grow, that pitcher plant. So second is season. Season, if you do it in winter, those all shiver up, they die off, not good in winter. So it's good in spring, between spring and fall. Those are good for display with the tree. In winter, that you use different things. Yeah. In winter, you can use grasses to grow them, to, to grow with the tree. And then also the scroll, the scroll location and Season. How do you think the scroll matches with these two guys though? What do you think? I kind of think they don't match. They don't match? No. Uh -huh. I mean, I can't really, because yeah. it looks like so, both. So, the you know, where well, last grow, they usually grow close to the water. Uh, they love water, they grow close to the water. So we go in, sometimes people go in with the boat to collect them. Yeah, we do. We yeah. Kayaks yeah. Area. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you, you know the but story about it, it related, much, much related to the that, So mm -hmm. I take kayaks or bogs. Yeah, okay. and then they find the... Float into the bogs. Yeah. A lot of those so that's our location also. Before you hit a map. So this is based on environment and not like shape per se. Because like right. for me, this kind of right. all looks phallic. So like a big rock, mm -hmm. a rock would look nice too. Yeah, they grow, the area they grow it has a hill also, right? Yeah. But they grow, they like to grow in the, the wet area. Bog. Yeah, go in main, the bog. Main bog. Yeah. Well, there's mountains in the distance. I picked it for mountains above, but we watch it in the marshy kind of mm -hmm. bog area. Mm -hmm. So this come from upstate New York? Come Where? Uh, Maine. 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 Yeah, Maine. Maine. Ma there is mountains yeah. in the back. Way up there. So cold. They like cold. Nice they like cold. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, close to Canada. I collect it. Yeah. Close to Canada. And you are you live about two, two hours away, something like that? It's eight. Eight hours? Eight hours. Ooh. <laughs> long drive. One way. Long drive, One long way. drive. Six long drive. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> for, you have a chance to go up? Aren't they just empty everywhere except for the top? No, no, no. no. The, if if you, you find them in the forest, you find them out in the open, they, they tend to be a little bit fuller. And the path is a little bit more flat. The fur a little bit more flat. So it. Get the flat design, it's nicer for, for the fur. And it has, has a, you see a lot of pad and they are, are a little bit flat. This is okay. The one I want, one, two things I want to, to talk about is the, the, the size of the trunk and the size of the container. 
So on this kind of a semi-cascade, and the tree on the top of the mountain has a good, good dead wood on it. I think the pot is a little bit too big, too wide. So I think come up, come down a little bit smaller. The proportion of the pot and the tree, big pot make the tree look smaller. Smaller pot make the tree look big. But when it's in good proportion, you you make the everything in is well balanced. But when I look at this tree, the pot the pot's too too heavy. Deep pot is fine, but the pot the wide the width of it make it look big. You and add more foliage, it would look more yeah. balanced. Yeah, yeah. When it's fuller, it may may look better with the pot pot size. And then when you display the tree, that could be the the cone from, from the tree or the similar cone. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the size, you have big tree. The second piece or action plan or, or companion is a little bit too small. You want it a little bit bigger when you have this. Okay? From China, they craft they craft new branch on it. And I'm not sure this one's crafted. It looked like the variety that they craft on it. I just want to talk about the tree itself. Talk about the trunk, talk about the design. So when you look, you look at the tree. Now you know how high I make my tree. Simple is where the taper meet. So where the taper meet. This is the height. Somewhere in here is the height that I think will look good. Second, you want to frame the trunk. You want to frame the trunk. So you have this. This is a good, good part on the trunk. It has the arrow root that's knit together and it feels together become part of the trunk. But the tree is sitting on top of the focal point. So when you design the tree, you want, you want them to blend in together. You want to frame the focal point. So I get the tree down lower. This is the, the good part of it. So when you frame it out, this is the triangle silhouette that I do. And then get the lower branch, get lower. Fika is easy to craft. Easy to grab, easy to add new branch on it. You can try also Ebihara technique. So pack, pack a sphagnum moss, get it to root. You don't need to grab a new one. Pack sphagnum moss, get it to root, and cut it, drill it, and stick it in. It will work on, on this. We, I've done it before. So this, you can add more branches Just anyway. Cut the air layer off and shut it in. Yeah, so, so <laughs> you, you basically like air layer, but you don't have to cut them. You don't even have to cut no, it. No, no cut. <laughs> no cut. Just pack sphagnum moss, the air root will come out. I will go in, the, go in your, your sphagnum moss and then cut it behind, grow it, and stick it in and leave the arrow root in there. So the arrow root will feed the, the new branch. The time that they fuse together, it will stay there and we fuse. Oh, so you leave the arrow, arrow root? Yeah. Air, air roots out? Yeah, leave the root, yeah, to oh, feed okay. it. All ficus can do that? You can do that on fi really? all ficus, yeah. And then this, we add new branch yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you add new branch here, get it lower and get it spread out. So ficus, if you look at them, then naturally they want to spread out and then they send arrow root on, in the forest. So you want to make it look, yeah. They call it banyan style. Right. Yeah, that's another style. Or you, you don't want that, you can just have the ficus or, or ficus style, you can do that too. Yeah, so that's, that's part I want to talk about. When you design the tree, focal point, frame the focal point. Frame the focal point and then there's a good banyan style. We can go take a look over there. Excellent. Okay. But it looks nice as a whole tree, though, right? Look I mean, nice as a whole. It has triangle, but this is the yeah, this is two unit. Yeah. The trunk, the 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 foliage is sitting on the trunk. Yeah. The outline is sitting on the it's trunk. Like a lampshade. Yeah. Maybe even turn it around and hide yeah. the good part for now. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. And then when you grow them, this is a leaky part. You need you need to get more structure on it get the smaller branch in there. So this I call it lakey. Yeah. Uh, because when there's nothing you can you can make the tree small. Yeah I mean then that's coming forward too. You just yeah you can off. improve it. Yeah. It's difficult to improve. Sometimes some some species of ficus you can cut them all off. The whole thing. Stop the whole thing and grow new branches. You can do that in a certain species. But this one I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Oh, so you couldn't just cut that off and try to get it to grow? Yeah, some of them you can. I'm not sure about this one. And I'm not sure if, if these are grafted. Sometimes you can see it well that's been grafted. I'm not sure these are grafted or the original tree. Here on the tree, the trunk become round. 
you don't have interesting flat trunk on certain part of the tree. So it will become round. So this one, certain, certain part has root on it, it will become thicker, we add more, more, more trunk on it. And the nice part about it, it will start to peel, the bark start to peel. You have, you have different color, different patch of color on the trunk. Okay. It has, it's thorny tree, you see a lot of thorn there. So be careful when you cut them, you have long shoot, be careful. I step on it before. Oh. Go through my shoes. Yeah, get bloody foot that 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 year. So, so it kind of look like a case here. So when I have Brazilian tree, I try to try to get it wider. Go the branch out wider. So that's the way the the tree the tree look in in nature. So I grow this branch longer and have it go in and out a little bit between the path get it wider and a little bit shorter on this side so right now the tree is, is heavy on this side on the right side and light on the left side what so about the taper rule a lot of yeah the taper rule, less taper taller tree less taper okay taller tree this tree fit the height the other thing that uh, when you start working on the tree the tree start to get more refined start to become a short tree Look at the top too. The branch start getting big on the top, apical dominant. Try to reduce the heavy branch on the top. Keep, keep the biggest branch on the bottom, skinny, smaller, smaller, smaller toward the top. So that's part of the tree in nature. The youngest part, the top. You have big branch on the top, it looks funny. So you want smaller branch. So this, this apply on all species you work with. Okay, over time you improve it. So this branch get, start to get big because it has more foliage here. So this, this is a cut back. Cut back, get it smaller and get that side. Start, we started about six, seven years ago, but I started working on this tree about, let's say, we plan on the last, about three years start working on, 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 on this tree with him. So it's a bird baby, ficus. And it has already has small leaves. In the past, somebody come in and say, "Okay, first thing you do, you defoliate them." So I don't defoliate. Usually, I don't defoliate the tree. You don't need to. If you learn to prune the tree, get them, get them develop. You develop more branches, the leaf. You create more small branches. The leaf will shrink by itself. That's one thing. The next thing is already have small leaves. So the leaves, the leaves you can see, some of them still get big leaves, some, some part get small leaves. The one that has denser, more branches get smaller leaves. And then this is combined with the main trunk kind of in the center. And this is banyan style. So the branch going out, has arrow roots start to come out and then cover the wider area, the top more rounds on this. Was that several plants just one. on top of each other? One. One, one tree, yeah. One tree, and it starts start to uh, develop more twigs. The last three years, we, we develop more. The way to develop more twigs is let the tree grow, cut it back, not the two leaves. People say everything, cut back the two leaves to promote the twigs. No, <laughs> that's become too, ma too, too many that you cut off for certain species. For this, we cut off, it depends on, on the branch itself. So the branch on the top gets stronger, you can cut to two to four leaves. Down here we keep more. Keep six to eight leaves when we, when we do that. And you can do it two, three times a year. Is that just on the shoot or on the entire branch? On the shoot. Just the shoot. On the shoot. So we cut, cut, uh, so I call, branch, I call it pinching. So, sorry, I call it pinching. So you have the new shoot that grow out. You cut back to two to four to six leaves, that's pinching. Cut back means you have branch, you have structure of the branch. You cut the whole section off, use another pad to become a new leader. So that's cut back. So that, this is when we pinch them. We keep, we keep two to four leaves here, six to eight leaves down here. And then you start to develop very quickly. And then what we do also, we take, take some of the old leaves off that, that will get the line going inside. 
and then you can develop more of the fine trick that way. Okay. Do you have to rotate when you're on the working bench to get the air in the air? And when you grow it, you should rotate the tree. Yeah, every two weeks should rotate uh, 90 degree. Or you do once a month, you rotate 180. Yeah. This is the banyan you were talking about. Banyan. Yeah. This is the banyan star that I talk about. So this one, the main trunk, not not much of the taper. It's so skinny and taller. So I keep it this way, and then the branch come out getting. But it is as wide as the other one is at the base there. Yeah. The middle. So I can see what you mean now about lowering it. Yeah, lower the tree so it brings your focus onto the lower part of the tree. So this focus on the multiple trunk and also the arrow root. Bring your eye down, bring your attention down to the, to the focus on that. Next, uh, show him. Okay, the tree on top. Tree on top, usually conifers. Conifer high mountain tree, so this is the high two peak. So high mountain tree go on top. The common one that you're gonna see is uh, black pine, five meter pine, junipers. So that's the one we use on top. And then the lower parts, the tree that grow at different location. So momichi or Japanese maple. Japanese maple go in the, the medium range of the height. They don't go on the top of the mountain, they usually don't go too low, but they do go in the lower part, but they still call uh, mountain maple, they grow in higher. Trident grow lower, so when you grow them, you have trident Japanese, you want to have trident lower Japanese, a little bit higher. And the flow of the tree in the box stand should flow toward each other, should flow toward the inside. And then you have one setting, so this is the main, this is the secondary. The secondary is the whole one setting that accent the, the, the main. So this one should be smaller. So different style. So this one usually when we do it, we have another stand here, one setting here. You can use any style of the tree. You can use uh, formal upright, informal upright, the tree that's going in the lowland. Or you can have a cascade, semi-cascade. And then the accent plan should be about that big because it's go with the smaller one, smaller tree. And then this fill in. Some people say you shouldn't have the tree on the top of the stand on the tree itself on here. But we, we do that. We do all kinds. Some of the tree, if the high is good, we don't need stand. Some is low, higher stand. Yeah, which one? Oh, in the front is what count <laughs> when you put on the stand, not in the back. So don't worry about the back. And then this one, high. So I don't think this is a suit out here. I think the juniper go outside and come back in, but the floor the, is the wrong wrong side of the stand. And more modern. Than yeah. Else. Yeah. So juniper outside better. So this part. It depends on where they are. Sometimes we have needle juniper in here, or procumbin. It's going in the procumbin go actually higher than needle juniper. Needle juniper go in lowland, so needle juniper go different location. So if you have juniper, needle juniper better than chimpaku. Chimpaku is a high, high mountain, high mountain tree. So that's how you display the the box stand for shohin. This should be outside. And then see the box stand that's, that's built, you can flip it. Yes. You can have it the same way, move it to the, that side and have juniper on this side. But the main tree pointing different direction. So this should point the same, going in toward each other. So that's consideration on how, how to set your shohin display, how to put them together. Different type. Fruiting, flowering, broadleaf, conifer, and what kind of conifer you have also. This is actually just got two conifers in it, are you saying? Yeah, no, two conifer is fine, but different kind. Yeah, you don't want black pine here and black pine here. Black pine here is fine, black pine on the outside is fine. I'm still trying to understand why you think that that should not be inside there. This one is high mountain. Oh, okay. High mountain tree. Okay.